Hey everybody, what's going on? Hayden Crabtree here, another back porch chat. Beautiful day, gotta be outside. And listen, I'm out here thinking, you know, why are more people not interested in real estate investing? And I think it's because it's really overcomplicated. A lot of people love to make it so complicated. So in today's video, uh, we're gonna talk about how you can buy your next investment property, first investment property, next investment property in 90 days, okay? So I have a bigger version of this video. It's about an hour uh, long that I want you to check out when you have time. I'll link that in the description. It's absolutely free. It's a webinar I did. But I wanna talk briefly through the steps of how you can get from where you are today over the next three months to closing your first investment property. I've seen this a lot of times uh, and I just wanna have a candid conversation with you about how you can actually do it, okay? So if you hadn't gotten my book, grab a copy of my book. That's kind of the fundamentals of what we're talking about here. Uh, the link to that, skip the flip, secrets to 1% know about real estate investing. Uh, link to that in the description, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. Let's do it. So whenever I first got started, I had no idea what I wanted to do in real estate investing. Uh, I thought the money was in flipping houses. I thought I needed to house hack things. I thought that I would never get into commercial real estate. And so, you know, I've been working in real estate for about six years now, uh, acquired property in five different states, multiple partnerships. I've done a lot. And I want to talk to you guys about how you, what are the most essential things you can do to move yourself forward, buy your first investment property, your next investment property in the next 90 days. Okay. So first thing to do is you got to know your goal okay if we want to do something in life we have to know what it is we want to do and that's no different you know than real estate It'd be like if we we're going in the stock market and I want to invest some money in the stock market I'd have to know what was my goal do I want to go invest in something that has the potential to 10 or 20 X do I want something that's low risk do I want something that that pays out dividends a high dividend what am I looking for and that's the same exact thing that you have to know in real estate investing. What are my goals? Am I looking to, uh, to put money to work for the long term? Am I looking to have a property I can go to three times a year on vacation that all that pays for itself? Am I looking to, you know, have a piece of property that serves my business, but also I can rent out and make money? What is the goal, right? And so to back the goal up, you have to know what are the financial numbers behind that? Do I want to hit a certain percent IRR, meaning my wealth is growing? That could be through equity. It could be through cash flow. It's probably through both. Do I want a certain cash flow number? Am I trying to reach financial freedom? Right. If I know that uh, my goal is to reach financial freedom, I need cash flow in my life, then I'm looking for high cash on cash properties. I don't really care so much about high IRR properties. I mean, it's great, but I want high cash on cash. I care more about cash on cash than I do IRR. Right. And so just to start it, what is the goal? What am I trying to get out of this? That's the first place to start. If you can name your goal, if you can write it down, that is one of the most important places to start. I'm looking to generate X dollars of cash flow a month. I am looking to put X dollars to work, you know, for this time period. You have to know why you want to do it, right? And so that's really the first step. After you've done that, you can start looking for properties that are going to meet your goal. So if you know, hey, I want to put, let's say you have $100,000 in the bank. Hey, I want to put $100,000 to work. Then you need to know, okay, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to look for properties that are, you know, $400,000, $500,000 plus so that I can put all of that money to work that I need that money to work. Or if on the other hand, I have no money, right? Then we need to be working in situations in which I can buy property with no money. That'd be lease options, mainly off market deals, owner finances, things like that. If you have no money to work with, it's not really smart to go out into the market and try to bid against other people who are cash buyers. You're never going to make any progress, right? So know your goal, know what you have, what you can work with. That's really the first place. Start looking for deals that are going to meet your criteria. So let's say, for example, if, you know, I wanted to if I wanted to put $100,000 to work and I wanted to put it away for 10 years and I care about IRR, I'm going to go look for bigger commercial properties that have the potential to grow a lot where I can leverage my money and that's where I'm going to start at. So, you know, if I have no money and I want to let's say make $10,000 over the course of the next couple months, I'm not going to go look for a rental property that is only making $300 a month in cash flow because that's not going to hit my goal. So it all revolves around what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? And then figuring out what the property type is for you. So my personal goals, I want to go out and I want to find deals that are going to net me $10,000 a month in cash flow. So I know, and I love storage units, I love commercial property. So I know that I need to go out and I need to be looking 
looking for deals that generally are going to cost over three million dollars and so if something's going to cost three million dollars I mean, i'd love to pick it up for a million dollars i'd love to pick it up for less but generally three million dollars is going to get me to a place where the property is probably producing you know five hundred six hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue and then after all expenses are paid i can get to ten thousand dollars a month and so you can kind of reverse do some of the math on these after you know your goal, what your goal is, where you need to place money, what kind of property, you need to start underwriting the property. And so I'll put a link on the screen right now to another YouTube video where I talk about how to underwrite a property and a free pro forma you can have to go out and actually underwrite properties. But that's the next goal. After you start looking for your subject properties, you want to start underwriting them to see if they're going to hit your goals or not. And so when we're underwriting, you know, there's this old saying in, in, I don't know, data, I guess, is that garbage in, garbage out, right? We have to know the numbers we're putting into our pro forma, if those are good numbers, if they're bad numbers, if they're realistic, if they're not realistic, because if we're underwriting properties with bad numbers, we might as well not even underwrite them, right? So we have to research the properties, we have to research the market, we have to know what markets we want to be in. If you want to buy, you know, Let's use my goal for example. If I want to find properties that produce ten thousand dollars a month in cash flow, uh, I need to know what markets I'm going to look in, right? Because I could look. There's so many properties in this nation that produce over five hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue that I need to know what markets do I really want to be in. So for me, I love Florida, I love Georgia, uh, and I love Tennessee, right? So out of those three places I can start to narrow down find properties over a certain size and I can go out and underwrite them and I can also when I focus in on certain markets coming back around to the data thing I can start to learn those markets and I can get good at those numbers so becoming familiar with a market that you're in is super super important because that's going to allow you to see opportunities if you're jumping from market to market to market to market you're not going to be able to see those opportunities when one brings itself to it because you won't be able to recognize, oh, these markets are below. Oh, this is a great spot because of this, this, and this reason. You have to become familiar and kind of focus in on one area, two areas, three areas. I think three areas is really the top you know, space you should focus in. In the beginning, you can branch out as you go along, but you should really focus in one, two, or three areas as you first begin. Those don't have to be in your own backyard, right? You can invest just like me in multiple different states, and that's fine. Just know your markets, know the numbers, become familiar with those markets. So after you find a property, after you underwrite it, after you find that it hits your goals, you need to go out and you need to actually make an offer on the property. So uh, what I do, and if, if you're interested in this, I have a program called Deal Finder Mastery. It's all about how to find off-market properties and what I teach in there I'll teach you right here too is there are pretty much three offers that I want to make on every single property and so the three offers that I make one is an all cash offer I say all cash but really I'm using a bank right so if I'm buying a property for three million all cash doesn't mean I'm paying three million all cash I'm gonna go put down you know some money and the bank is gonna give me the rest of the money but the owners getting it all cash the second offer and really there's a lot of different ways you can do this you can look at lease options you can look at owner finances you can look at sub two deals there's a lot of different ways to do this um, what you can do is you can make more than one offer and find out what works for them so a lot of great ways to acquire property is finding creative deals that work for the owner and work for you too and that can help you stand out from the crowd that's really a key to getting an offer accepted especially in today's market is how do I stand out from the rest of the offers out there if I am competing against other people uh, and so making more than one offer is a great way to stand out and so let's say you make one one offer all cash the second offer you can make an owner finance deal uh, you know with let's say if it's a hundred thousand dollar property you can make an owner finance deal with ten thousand dollars down and four hundred dollars a month for the next 20 years and then the third offer you could do an owner finance deal with twenty thousand dollars held in second position and you'll pay that off over the course of 10 years there's a lot of different ways you can cut that up but to make offers in multiple ways rather than just, hey, I'll give you 100,000 for the house. Hey, I'll give you 100,000 for the house, or I'll give you 100,000 with 10,000 down, or I'll give you 100,000 with 80,000 down, and you hold 20,000 in the second position. There's a lot of different ways you can go, and finding ways to stand out against competitors, especially in a competitive market, is a really good way to actually make progress and get deals accepted within those first 90 days. You know, and then once you get in a deal, once you get an agreement, again, this is a numbers game. I mean, I tell my students in my cash flow accelerator program is that if you are going to, really, I don't say if you're going to, I'm saying it's pretty much a requirement that if you want to get a deal, you have to analyze 100 deals. And that's not what a lot of people want to hear, but the reality is, is that if you want to get a deal in any market, you need to just, it's an 
numbers game. Just like sales, just like anything else, you need to be out there making offers, a lot of offers, talking to a lot of people in order to get one person to say yes. So if you really want to close a deal in the next 90 days and you're doing, uh, you know, if you're making an offer a week, it's not going to happen. Just straight up, it's not going to happen. You have to be making, let's call it two or three offers a day, right? And that's work. That requires a lot of work. I'm not going to BS with you. Say it's super easy. Uh, work is required in order to make progress in real estate at any point, but especially in a hot market like 2021, you have to, have to, have to be hustling. You have to be grinding. You have to be talking to a lot of people, making a lot of offers, making multiple offers on every single property, like we just talked about, one, two, three. Those are all really important things if you're actually trying to get out there and make progress, right? And so if you're getting started, you can define your goals in a day or two. And if you can start underwriting and making offers on say three or five properties a day, and then you're gonna be a lot closer to actually getting that first investment, right? Or your next investment. And so just get after it, just hustle, just do it. It's not complicated. Uh, you know, I have a saying, make offers, make money. And so if you're not making offers, you're not gonna make money, you're not gonna buy any property. People don't just come up to you and say, hey, wanna buy this property? You have to be marketing yourself as somebody who will buy that property for them. And so that's super important. I mean, that's, that's a crucial thing that you have to be doing if you wanna make you know, progress in a short amount of time is offers, 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 offers. I would even keep track, keep a scorecard. How many offers am I making every single day? Don't leave Saturday and Sunday off the list. Make offers on Saturday, make offers on Sunday. Super important. And then the last thing you wanna do, once you actually make offers, you get one accepted, is you know you gotta figure out how am I gonna finance this? How am I gonna close this? Uh, and, and what is the due diligence? So let's just go through those real quick. You know We have this thing called the capital stack, which is the combination, let's say I'm buying a property for 100,000. Where's that $100,000 coming from? right if a bank is going to give me a loan for 80,000 then i need another 20,000 from somewhere else do i have that 20,000 does an investor have that 20,000 does a partner have that 20,000 who can i get that other 20,000 from you have to figure those pieces out then you have to look at your pro forma and you have to say okay well the money coming out of this deal if i raise 20,000 from an investor they need a 10% return let's call it $2,000 a year if this property produces $4,000 a year how much is the investor getting how much am i getting how is that split going to be determined who's going to do what responsibilities right so these are things you have to figure out and the sooner you know that the better if you don't have any investors in your network right now in that 90 day time frame you need to be finding local real estate meetups okay so i'm in atlanta but wherever you are there's bound to be real estate meetups near you once a week once a month you can go to meetup.com uh, you can get on bigger pockets you can get on google and search you know real estate meetup near me Another great place to go is Facebook uh, groups. So if I'm in Atlanta, which I am, if you were here, you type in you know Atlanta face or Atlanta real estate uh, on Facebook groups. There's probably 10 Atlanta Facebook groups. Uh, get in those. Ask around where the local meetups are, what meetups you can go to, and that's where you can find people who can teach you, but also people who can invest with you. It's a great spot to go to meet people, and so start doing that as soon as possible. One thing about raising money from investors is it's not going to be something where you know you meet somebody the next day they invest with you. These are long cycle processes to where I need to be knowing somebody, I need to trust somebody before I'm going to invest with them. You know, let's call it at least a month, right? I mean, preferably I'm going to know people who you know I met them years ago and they just invest with me, right? That's going to be the same for you. If you want to build a career in real estate investing and raising capital, you need to always be focused on meeting investors, just the same as you're focused on finding deals, right? And so if you're going to try and close something in the next 90 days, one of the easiest ways to go is use your own cash or raise money from friends and family, people you already have a relationship with who already have money. And so that's a great place to start. After you do that, after you know where your money's coming from, after you figure out your bank, you really need to go to uh, the due diligence on the property. Get a property inspection, know the physical condition, knows what kind of repairs it needs. If it needs any repairs, don't wait until after you buy it to figure it out. Figure out what that's gonna cost beforehand because that's gonna play into your capital stack. Oh, it needs 10,000 repairs? Well, this isn't a $100,000 purchase. This is now a $110,000 purchase. Where's that money coming from? Make sure that the money you're spending is fitting into your goals. So if your goal was a 10% cash on cash, and you got to put money, more money into a deal. Let's say you got to put ten thousand dollars more into the deal. Well, does that deal still hit your goal of producing ten percent cash on cash, right? And so this is the general time frame 
uh, if you actually did want to close a property in the next 90 days, know your goal, figure out where you need to be looking in terms of market and property type in order to hit your goal. Start making a ton of offers, underwriting deals, talking to a bunch of people. And you can look on market, but one of the best places to look is off market. That's what we go over, where off market deals in that longer, how to buy your first investment property in the next 90 days presentation that I talked to you about. Again, that link is in the description. Um, we talk about how to find off market deals, step-by-step -step process. You guys can steal that too. That's one of the best places to find deals, especially in a hot market. So listen, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions about how to do this over the next 90 days, check out that webinar, leave me a comment here, pick up a copy of my book for longer term education, absolutely free audiobook PDF. But most importantly, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate it. I'll see you guys in some of the next videos. Be great.